Potion Permit, a game developed by Mass Hive Media, is finally here and I've been really looking forward to this one. This pixel-styled action-adventure RPG has kept me occupied for the last two weeks with its fast-paced progression and lovable characters. The story here is that you arrive to the town of Moonberry to take up the role of the town chemist. Although, due to an accident that had occurred a few years prior involving the previous chemist, the townsfolk are very distrusting of you and the type of work that you do. But alas, the mayor's child has fallen ill and as a last resort they call upon you to try and cure her. So pretty stressful first job, especially as everybody in town is quite hateful towards you. But that soon changes as you earn their trust and they begin welcoming you into their lives. From that point on you go about fixing whatever issues the previous chemist has caused, getting to know all of the residents and their stories and curing the citizens whenever they fall ill. Probably my favourite thing about Potion Permit was the fast paced progression. I found the first week or two of the game to be fairly slow and I didn't have that much to do. But then my prayers were answered as I found myself being blasted with new quests, new areas, workbenches, things to upgrade. And every day I would go somewhere that would trigger a cutscene and a subsequent quest. I was in progression heaven. Now to give you a bit of a look at what you'll be doing in this game, I'll be talking through the clinic that you'll manage, building friendships with the town citizens, upgrading your home and tools, and general world exploration. Shortly after you arrive to town and prove that you're a capable chemist, you'll get the clinic to manage where you'll diagnose and treat patients. A little alarm attached to the clinic will go off when you have a patient, so you can make your way over and start the process of making them better. You'll diagnose these illnesses by playing one of several mini-games, which are all fairly easy to complete. And once you know what they have, you can then make the potion to cure them. The majority of these illnesses are things like bloating and rashes, which makes it all the more funny that these people feel the need to stay overnight in your clinic. I was surprised to find that the clinic isn't that large a part of the game. I thought I'd get patients more often as I progressed, but it stayed about the same. A blessing in one way because you don't want to be pulled away from whatever it is you're trying to accomplish by having to cure people, but it would have been helpful at times to earn the extra cash. On to friendships, which unlike the clinic is a very large part of the game because that's where you'll find about 80% of your quests. I'd say on average I'm never really focused on making friends in games unless it benefits me in some way, but that wasn't the case in Potion Permit. These people hate you from the start and will barely even talk to you. So to go from that to them being polite and then to them opening up to you about their troubles and backgrounds, I found it quite interesting. They all have these unique and distinct personalities and stories that are all very detailed. Not only did it make the side quests interesting, but it gave the town as a whole a sense of life to it. There is also romance in the game, but only as far to become like official with them and go on dates. There's no marriage, which was a shame. There is this big beautiful world for you to explore consisting of the town, a lush meadow area, a snowy mountain and an arid desert. You start off with access only to the town and the meadow, but as you prove yourself to the mayor, he awards you with these passes that allow you to access other parts of the world. You'll explore to find ingredients for your potions, wood and stone that's used for various upgrades and to engage in combat with various animals that occupy the areas as they also provide resources to be used in your potions. Each area has its own unique resources so as you progress in the game and gain access to other areas you'll be able to get other resources which is useful for your potion making as I'll explain a bit later. If you're more of a casual gamer and are wondering about the combat, don't stress. Combat consists of using any one of your tools you have for resource collecting such as your axe or hammer to attack enemies. Button mashing will be your friend here and aside from some of the later game areas, animals barely fight back. In fact, if you just keep smashing that attack button, they'll only really get in one hit and it does minimal damage. 
so it's very easy. It does get a bit harder later in the game, but if you upgrade your health and tools as you go, there'll be no trouble at all. If by chance you get to zero health or stamina, you simply wake up in bed the next day at about lunchtime. So you lose some time, but that's all. I think it's the perfect blend of adding in combat, but also having it in a way where casual gamers won't be overwhelmed. You'll have access to a map with plenty of fast travel points, thank you developers, although I will say that having to slowly move your cursor over the map for it to snap onto any houses in between you and a fast travel point got a bit old. Side note, but I love the fact that your house is in the heart of town. Most games tend to put you on the outskirts, so it was a very welcome change. As I touched on before, there are plenty of upgrades available throughout the game. You can upgrade your home, your clinic, your tools, your health, and your cauldron. One thing to note is that this game can get quite grindy. All upgrades require money, which is fairly easy to come by through your clinic, selling potions, or doing part-time work, but you'll also need a lot of wood and stone. This can take quite a while to get as you burn through stamina easily, so that limits how much you can get each day. But also, you need so much of it. Even your first few upgrades will have you spending several days collecting wood and stone. I didn't mind it too much, but I know not everybody loves a grindy game. On the plus side, it's easy to grab any surrounding plants as you do this, meaning you'll always have a good supply for your potions. And speaking of potions, just going into that a bit more, each plant that you collect comes with its own unique shape, kind of like Tetris blocks, and each potion has a different sort of area that you need to fill with these shapes to successfully make it. You only get a certain number of ingredients to use to fill these areas, but upgrading your cauldron will allow you to use more ingredients. There's also some other things that you can occupy your time with, such as fishing, cooking, doing community quests to earn some extra cash, part-time work that involves more little mini games, and even trying to find all of the people, resources, animals, and cooking recipes to fill out your journal. Last but not least, you get a pet. Which was one of the initial things that drew me into wanting to play this game. Who doesn't love a trusty little sidekick to keep you company as you explore? You can name your dog and it will follow you around wherever you go, except indoors, which, like, lame. At first, your dog doesn't really do much, but as you build your friendship, he can help you out by finding buried items and even leading you to NPCs that you're wanting to find. Onto graphics, and I love pixelated art styles, especially when a lot of detail and thought has gone into it. And while Potion Permit has very simple graphics, the amount of effort and detail into everything from the art to the interactions with the townsfolk and how they act, it's anything but simple. It's quite an immersive town with amazing attention to detail, so thumbs up from me. As for the sounds, I am just a huge fan of crisp, crunchy sound effects in video games. It's just a whole vibe for me, especially footsteps, and this game totally delivers. I did experience some minor lagging at odd times as I played on the Nintendo Switch and I also had a few times where animals were glitching and going to places they shouldn't have and were out of reach. So overall, nothing too bad. These didn't affect me enjoying or experiencing the game at all. So onto some tips if you decide to play this game. If you ever find yourself a bit stuck, I recommend you explore. There were quite a few times where I was short on quests, mostly during the start, but then I'd go to the tavern or city hall or even the outskirts of town and a cutscene would begin to progress the story. So exploring is essential. Make sure you upgrade your cauldron as much as you upgrade your other stuff. You'll need these upgrades for later potions that you'll have to make to progress the main story. Lastly, I recommend whenever you're in the wilderness, just keep collecting plants as you go because it'll mean you always have enough to quickly cure any patients you might have, saving you the hassle of having to constantly go out to collect plants for your potions. 
Given that there are so many other similar titles like Potion Permits saturating the game market nowadays, it really pays to stand out and offer something unique to set you above the rest. Honestly, I don't think Potion Permit necessarily has that, but at the same time, I don't think it falls below any of those other games. It's another great, cute little pixelated RPG that I thoroughly enjoyed. If you generally find that you like games where you can build relationships, learn about people's stories, upgrade all your stuff and like a really chilled and relaxing game experience, then this one is for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button if this review helped you. I really appreciate the support and I will see you in the next video. Bye!